Good, every, good evening, everyone. Good evening. How's everybody doing? So before we actually start, I want to make sure a little maintenance right now. So did everybody do a registration card? How many did not do a registration card? Okay, if you did not do one, please see the registration back there because if you look up here, these are all the prizes we're giving away tonight. And some of the ones you don't see is our gift cards. Like we have some gift cards to the IMAX theater for the big IMAX screen. So how many has ever been to the IMAX theater? Okay, so we're giving away tickets for that. And how many Harry Potter fans do I have? So we had a donation today of two IMAX Fantastic Beasts for next week, uh, 835 next week. So they're on the big screen. So if you stick around, we're probably gonna give the prizes away about what time, Brittany? About 710, we're gonna start giving prizes away. So if you, like I said, make sure you have a registration card filled out and that's how we're gonna pick the winners. So, but like I said, I wanna thank everybody for coming out tonight. I know it's a school night. So we're gonna go about till 7.30. And we designed this little information night to give you some ideas and thoughts about, you know, going to college, how to pay for college. So how many is going to college? Okay. Out of the ones that have thought about going to college, have you thought about how to pay for college? Are we just gonna rely on maybe one scholarship from the tribe? Is that possible? Is that able to, to pay for college just for one with one scholarship? Is that possible? How much do you think college runs for a four-year education? Asa, how much, does it, how much does it run for a four-year college education, you think? About $60,000. And that just depends on where you go. That might be for Cameron, but if you go to a private university, you're looking at about $120,000 for four years. Does anybody have $120,000 in their bank account right now? We got one back here. So before we uh, start the program, I want to introduce some of the staff, the higher education staff. Myself, my name is Kelly Berry. I'm the Agile Education Specialist and the GED instructor. So my coworker, this is Brittany Turner. Say hello, Brittany. She is the database specialist for the Comanche Nation Higher Ed program. Back there, if you turn around, back there at the Comanche Nation Higher Ed booth, that's Christian Bose. He's actually the person you see if you want to go to college for the college scholarship. There's three programs in higher ed, but if you want to go to college, go see him, or you go see my coworker, Ekia Rosette. She, she runs the job placement and training program. And is Lena here? Okay, another staff member is Lena Proctor. She's the education technician. And back there in the back, we have Gwen Pesawana. She's a director of student services. We have Cameron here. Say hello, Cameron. Cameron, you back there? And we have OCAP. So OCAP's over here to the left. And OCAP, they're gonna explain what OCAP means. So, and they're gonna give you some ideas for scholarships. So if you want to learn about scholarships, FAFSA, how many know what FAFSA stands for? FAFSA, how many knows what it stands for? What's the very first F stand for, for in FAFSA? What is it? it? Stands for free. So that gives you an idea about free money. So we'll talk about that in a little while. So, but right now I'd like to introduce OCAP. And I believe their names is it Letha Huddleston? and Teresa Shackley. So if you give them a round of applause, this is OCAP, guys. All right, well, as he said, my name's Teresa, and Letha and I are both with the Oklahoma College Assistance Program, or OCAP, and we are part of the organization that oversees all the public colleges in the state. So we work with all the colleges across the state and with students and parents and educators to help you get into college wherever it is you're headed. So we have information about picking a college, how to pay for it, finding your way, how to get admitted. And so anytime you have a question about anything related to college, we are one of the stops that you can make. You can check in with us and we will be happy to help you get connected with the people you need to, to make that happen. So I specifically work with a website that's called OK College Start, and it is completely free to you and as a student or a parent to use, and it has all kinds of resources for 
to help you figure out what you want to do, what you want to study, where you want to go to school, how to pay for it, what you might be interested in doing as your career. So the website is okcollegestart.org and this is what it looks like. So you can have an account at any age. And then again, as a parent, you can also have an account to help your student work through these steps. So just a couple of the resources I wanna highlight for you. Um, we have six different career assessments you can take. So you answer really simple questions about what you like to do and what you don't like to do. And it helps match you with careers that you might be interested in. So if you're not sure what you wanna do when you grow up, this is a great place to start to kind of get some ideas. You can also explore all different careers. So as you can see, most of the careers have a little video you can watch so you can see what a person that works in that job, where it is they work. They'll talk about what kind of education they have, what they do in a, on a day-to-day -day basis. And then you can find all kinds of details about how that matches up with your interests based on those assessments you took. So you can kind of get an idea for if it's gonna be a good fit or not. And then there's also information about like how much money you're gonna earn in that career. And you can look at different parts of the state and different parts of the country and see is this a job that's growing and there's a need for it? Or is this a job that there aren't a lot of openings? And then how much money you can expect to make in that particular career. There's also free test prep. So as you're preparing to take your ACTs, SATs, the ASVAB, if you think you might enter the military, all kinds of different um, tests that you're planning to take this, this year as a senior and maybe even into college, the test prep is completely free. So you can access all of that and get some help so you make sure you do really well on those exams. There's also the financial aid section has a scholarship search. So what you'll do is fill in information about yourself. So you can put in what are your test scores, what's your GPA, what are your interests, any special circumstances in your family. Um, like if you have a chronic illness or someone in your family does, or if you're the first person in your family to go to college, you can indicate that here. Anything you wanna put in about yourself. And it's gonna search through 20,000 scholarships that are available nationwide and pick out the ones that you meet the qualifications for. So it does all the work for you and says, you are eligible to apply for this scholarship and you can click right through there to the application and fill that out. So it's a great resource that'll do all the searching for you. They've all been vetted to make sure that they're legitimate scholarships that you can apply for. Um, so you definitely wanna check that out. There's also, this, uh, this is the list, so it gives you that list of matching scholarships that you qualify for. Uh, my contact information's up here on the screen if you wanna take a picture or something, but at our table we have booklets um, that talks about all different types of financial aid and resources, and my contact information is in there as well, so you can get a hold of me that way. Um, but I'm gonna let Letha take over now and talk to you about some other resources available through the Oklahoma College Assistance Program. My name is Letha. I'm with the Oklahoma College Assistance Program. And we're all part of the State Regents for Higher Education. The website of the agency that I work for is called youcango2.org, and it's all about how to plan, prepare, and pay for college. Um, once you get in there, you'll see a home page that has all these buttons. You can click on any of those sections I just mentioned, plan, prepare, and pay. And then you tell that whether, what type of student you are, whether you're in high school, middle school, an adult learner, and it will get you to the information that's more specific for you. We have several publications that we offer at You Can Go To. And in fact, one of the um, people from the, the, excuse me, from the Comanche Nation was asking earlier about ordering some. Uh, all of our publications are free of charge and uh, we don't, you don't have to charge for postage or anything. But one of our favorite publications that we put out that is in high demand is called Are You Looking for Money? We also have these different checklists for each year of high school, freshman through senior. And those of you who have middle school students or middle school brothers and sisters, you can go to our website, you can go to.org, and you can look at middle school materials also, because it's really never too early to start talking about college. Here's the book I mentioned earlier, Are You Looking for Money? We have copies of those at our bright blue table over there. 
please feel free to pick one of those up because it is full of good information about the different types of financial aid that are available to help you pay for college, kind of how to prepare and, and pay for those. And pages three and four, look for the purple pages, contain a whole lot of scholarship websites that you can go to to look for different scholarships. So please make sure to pick one of those books up. If you're at our website, you can go to .org and you want to look for scholarships there, you click on the scholarships tab up at the top right corner and you'll see where you can either search by deadline or by category. Deadline meaning that the day that that scholarship application is due. Um, and so most students prefer to search by deadline because they don't want to miss one. And what I encourage you to do is, if let's say you went to November scholarships and you looked through some of them that were available, always remember to scroll down on that month's page because you're gonna find a table that's full of other scholarship opportunities. Each one of those scholarships that are listed for the month of November is a live link that will take you right to that scholarship application. So you can see if you would qualify for that, how to apply, what the deadline is. And this is not the full table. November has a whole bunch of scholarships. Some of our scholarships overlap what is that OK College Start, but most of the time we have different scholarships. She mentioned 20,000 at OK College Start, and then you add ours to that. That's a whole lot of scholarships to be looking into. And we encourage seniors to be applying for two to three scholarships a week, juniors possibly one to two a week. And that sounds like a lot of work, but the more scholarships you pay for, the more it, it might pay off because you won't get every scholarship you apply for. Um, I know that Kelly is going to tell you more about scholarships and paying for college through the FAFSA application. One thing you can do tonight when you get home is to get your FSA ID. Has anybody gotten their FSA ID yet for their FAFSA? Very good. That stands for Federal Student Aid Identification. If you are a senior, you need to get your FSA ID set up right away because that's going to serve as your electronic signature. And on our literature, back at our table, it gives you the website for where to go to set up that username and password. And then you'll be ready to fill out your free application for federal student aid, the FAFSA. Okay, anyone who's next? <laughs> Before we go to the next part, guys, I want to mention that we are live. See the cameras here? It, the, we are live across the world on Facebook. So if you have anybody at home that want to watch and stream it, I believe uh, IT might put it on the board in a little bit, but we are live to the world. That's just, we want to do that for everybody that couldn't be here. And I want to give a shout out to IT. They're the ones running all the IT stuff, so they work hard, and so they're nice enough to come down and live stream this. So. For those going to college, I'll tell you right now, you're going to have fun. You're going to have an experience. But getting there is the little tricky part because you have to go through so much stuff. You have to fill out so many documentation to get there to the first day of classes. Let's say you go to Cameron. Whatever you do over there to apply, and you apply your Comanche, and you apply with us for the scholarship, you got to do the same thing there and at our department. So everything you turn in, at Cameron, you got to turn in with us too, but my coworker Christian Bowes is going to talk more about that in a little while. But first of all, let's talk about FAFSA. And what did I say the first F in FAFSA stood for? Free. Does anybody know what the A stands for? Free what? Application. What about the third, the, about the third letter, the second F? What does it stand for? This, there's a second F. It's F-A-F-S-A. -S -S so what does the second F stand for in FAFSA? Anybody? I see some familiar faces out there. They should be knowing this. I see uh, a student of mine. Do you, Edward, do you know this? Okay. Financial. Okay. Is that Cameron says financial? Okay. So. We'll go over that, what it stands for in a minute, but it's free application for, fed, for free student aid, federal student aid. So let me repeat that again. Free application for federal student aid. And what that means is free money. But guess what it's based on? What is it based on? What is FAFSA based on? Whose income? 
until when? 18? Okay, so up until 24 years old, you have to report your parents' income for what year's taxes? Are we sure about that? So, so when you go to private for FAFSA, you have to report your parents' incomes if you are a dependent student. And what that means is a dependent student is 24 years old or under that is living with their parents and their parents report them on their income. So whenever you apply, so let's say you apply for 2019 for the fall 2019 semester, you have to report your parents' income for the 2017 year. So you go two years back. So even though it's 2019, you have to report it to 2017. For the students that started in the fall of 2018, what year did they have to report? 2016, that's how it works. So make sure you have, your parents did their taxes two years back. That's for dependent students, but what about independent students? What does that mean when I say independent students referring to FAFSA? What do you think that means? Ah, okay, so there's quite a few th options that you can, you're, you're under if you're an independent student, and one is you're homeless. Okay, if you're homeless and under 24, you're considered an independent student. Okay, somebody else give me another option. What's another reason you might be independent under 24? Live by yourself, okay? If you're active military, if you are a veteran, if you are married, you are considered an independent student under 24 years old and you do not have to report your parents' income. So a lot of those questions get asked and between the staff of higher ed, we have over probably 30 years of experience in higher ed. So anything that you have questions about, please ask. We, we've probably seen it before. So uh, during the timeout or during the speeches, if you have a question, please let us know. Because if you don't ask and you have, you're unsure about things, you may not find the answer. So I, I implore you to ask questions. That's the main thing. And I run a lot of students that come to me and they tell me they never ask questions because why? Why do questions never, students never ask questions? Because they're scared. So I had a, I think it was a 48 year old, ask a question the other day because he said, I never asked when I was growing up because I was just intimidated. I felt like the people were gonna think I was stupid. So please ask guys. So that's FAFSA. So the thing is, when can you apply for FAFSA? When can you apply? When's the, de when's the start date of FAFSA? What is it? October 1st. That means, has October 1st already passed? So that you can, if you're going to school in 2019, in the fall 2019, you can go ahead and apply on FAFSA. But how many years did I say you gotta go back on taxes if your parents claim you? Two years, so check with your parents. But the thing about FAFSA is that they have what's called an IRS retrieval tool. And so you don't have to really go get your parents' taxes if you know where they lived at in 2017, know what address they filed under, you can do the IRS retrieval tool and it'll pull up all their information for you. So if you wanna do that, make sure you have the correct address because if you miss one little letter or a number on the address, it doesn't pull it up. So is that a simple tool to use? Yes it is, but you'd be surprised by how many people forget their addresses that they filed under two years ago. So right now, do I have any questions about FAFSA so far? What we mentioned? Or do I, does everybody know about FAFSA, how it works? Okay, and then the next question I get is how much money do we get from FAFSA? Can anybody tell me the, how much money you get from FAFSA? It's based on your parents' income. If your parents make too much money, guess how much you get? Zero. So it's all based on your parents' income if you're dependent. So if you get the max amount of FAFSA free money that you don't have to pay back, you don't have to pay FAFSA back, it's all yours. What do you think the max for one year is for FAFSA free money you get if you qualify for the max amount? What do you think the max was for last year's? So let me tell you guess. If you get right on the, n the nail, if you hit it right on the nail, I'll give you one of the free gifts up here. So last year, how much do you think the max Pell was? It's also called a Pell Grant. 
So how much do you do? I have any takers? Do I have any people want to raise their hand and give me an exact amount? Okay, let's go over. There. Let's go over there, right there. How much? Not five thousand. Back there. How much? Nope. One more. I'll take one more. Over there. Seven thousand. Okay. So the max amount, and I'll tell you how it works, was six thousand nine hundred five dollars. Six hundred ninety-five dollars was the max amount you got last year. But the thing about that is, it's divided per semester. So you get six thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars for the full year. But if you divide that by two, how much do you get per semester? How much would you get per semester? You divide that number by two. Around what? Around three thousand. So you get three thousand per semester, fall semester and spring semester. A lot of people think that it's just one amount one time. No, you apply for it every year. So does 3,000 cover tuition, books, and supplies for one semester? Nope. So where else do you go? Where else can you go? Scholarships and what else? I don't really advocate for these, but people do take them. So what am I talking about? Loans. So a lot of students have taken out loans. But that's me, you know, I, I don't advocate for them, but that's me, okay? So that's FAFSA in a nutshell. Did we learn anything about FAFSA? Yes, I have a question, Brittany. Real, we'll see, talk, talk to me at break, talk to me at break. <laughs> okay, so did we learn something about FAFSA or did we already know everything about the FAFSA? Or did we, how many, how many learned something? How many actually learned something? Couple? Okay, so the max amount will change next year probably, but like I said, it's based on your parents' income, okay? Don't be surprised if you're like me that you didn't get nothing for fast because my parents made too much money when I applied for college. I got zero. So I had to rely on other scholarships like my co-worker, coworker Christian Bowes is gonna talk about other scholarships and I hope you heed the information because paying for college without owing anything is great. What do you think the percentage of people going to college owe nothing? What do you think the percentage is? It's very low. But you can pay for all of your college if you just apply for scholarships. There's tons of scholarships out there, guys, and we're gonna tell you a lot more, and all these booths you see right here have scholarships. So with that said, if you have any questions for me or any of staff, please ask, see us on break, see us afterwards. But now I'd like to call Christian Bowes up to the stand, and he's gonna talk to you about more about scholarships. Yes, I have a question real quick, Martin. Okay, how many years? So you have 12 semesters. So what is that in years, 12 semesters? So you have six years. Graduate students going for their master's and PhD, do they get anything, Christian? No, they don't get FAFSA as a graduate student, so it's only for undergraduate students, okay? So this is my coworker, Christian Bowes, and like I said, he's gonna talk to you more about scholarships. Okay. Good evening. <clears throat> First off, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Christian Bowes, and I'm the higher education specialist for the Comanche Nation Office of Higher Education. Now, uh, I met some of you while you guys were registering and coming in, and I saw a couple of uh, parents that I funded years ago, and now their children are like juniors and seniors in high school. So that tells me two things right off the bat. One, if a parent goes to college persists and pursues their bachelor's, master's, PhD, uh, there's a good chance their children are gonna look, at, look up to you and do the same thing and maybe even go further. And the second thing it shows me is that I'm old. I've been in this position for a long time if I'm funding parents and then their children. It's a joke, you guys are supposed to laugh. Anyway, it's late, I know. <clears throat> Basically my my primary responsibility as higher education specialist is to financially assist tribal members who are pursuing an associate's, bachelor's, master's, PhD, okay? And we do that through 
the Comanche Nation scholarship application, okay? For first year students, which some of you guys, I'm probably, I'm probably gonna see you guys in the spring and in the summer while you guys fill out our application, okay? Before I get started on the application, it's basically, I tell all my students, it's a three-step process, okay? The first step, first and foremost, find a school that you're interested in attending, apply for admissions, and get accepted. Get accepted to a two-year school, four-year school, okay? The second thing, what, we, what Kelly just talked about and what um, these guys, uh, the ladies talked about, as well as the FAFSA application, okay? Fill that out, okay? It starts October 1st every year. It's free money that the federal government gives you. It's first come, first serve, okay? Fill it out as soon as possible. Third and final step is to fill out our Comanche Nation scholarship application. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to give you guys a pop quiz, just what we talked about earlier with the FAFSA. What's the maximum amount that's giving, that the federal government's giving out this year? Do you guys remember? About 6000 Okay, I can tell you it's exactly, the maximum amount is $6,095. The maximum amount we give to our tribal members who are attending college or university, they're full-time students, once you complete the scholarship application, we'll give you guys $3,000 per semester. That's $6,000 in, ac in academic year. Another pop quiz, see if, how many math majors we have. What's 6,000 plus 6,095? $12,095. That's free money, okay, that the federal government's giving you and that what we're giving you. That's money that you don't have to pay back. Now, that's a significant chunk of money we're, we're giving you, the federal government's giving you, to pursue your post-secondary education, okay? Scholarship application process for a first-year student, fill out seven documents. The deadline for fall semester is always June 1st. We don't need every single document in by June 1st. We don't need all seven documents in. We just need something turned in by June 1st, okay? And again, this money, just like the federal government's money with the Pell Grant, it's first come, first serve, okay? I, this fall semester, I funded about 450 college students. Okay, that's undergraduates and graduate students. We have students, a majority of our students attend Cameron University. Their booth is set up in the back, check them out after we're done speaking, okay? And um, all our students attend schools throughout the United States. I have one attending a school in Canada and another attending school in Ireland, so. If you want to be an international student, you can, but something to think about, okay? Now, along with our Comanche Nation scholarship application, we also have a packet full of other scholarships that are available. They're tailored mostly towards American Indian students, okay? They're back at the table, um, at, the, at our higher education table. I'll be sitting there, and if you guys want to come over, grab some scholarship applications, feel free to do so, okay? Another thing I want to talk about very briefly is Oklahoma Promise. Do you guys know what that is? How many of you guys have heard of that? Okay, good, good. Oklahoma Promise is a scholarship application and opportunity for students in Oklahoma whose family income is below $55,000 a year, okay? You can apply for this scholarship as early as eighth grade, eighth, ninth, tenth, you guys can apply for it, okay? That 
that Oklahoma Promise, uh, the website is included in the scholarship packets that we're gonna be handing out to you guys tonight. Definitely check that out and also check out uh, the other scholarship opportunities that are listed. If you guys have internet access, I strongly urge you guys to uh, explore other scholarship opportunities uh, just by doing a Google search, American Indian Scholarships. You can even put in your, what you're interested in learning about, majoring in, do that if you're a female. But the fact that you're a female, okay, there are some really specific scholarships for American Indian students, okay? I take up too much time? Okay. Okay, uh, just off the bat, do you guys have any questions? <clears throat> That's also included um, in that scholarship packet. So I strongly urge each and every one of you to come by and visit me at that table, okay? And once again, I'm gonna plug them. Cameron University, they're set up. Go by and see them. Um, out of the 450 students that I funded this fall semester, a majority of them attend Cameron, okay? That's where I got my master's degree. It's a good school. Okay, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to ask me, I'll be at the table. Um, you can come and see me, like I said, after we're here boring you guys, all right? But scholarships, if you need money, come and see me, okay? Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. My name is Brittany Turner, and I am the database specialist for the higher education department. I wanted to go ahead and start off just to remind everybody to please register and that it puts you in the running for our door prizes. Um, dinner will be here probably in about 20 to 30 minutes. We're having pizza. So please stick around and enjoy some pizza and cookies. But I wanted to um, touch on a couple of things about the college experience. I graduated from Cameron two years ago, and I got my Bachelor of Science degree in psychology. I have not utilized that degree in a specific sense of um, counseling, but it did direct me into a passion that I have, and that's working with students in student services and higher education. So I do utilize that whenever it comes to um, the psychology of learning and um, things like that. It's really exciting. So I just want to remind everybody that sometimes you may not get into the field that you thought that you would get into, but you do if you pursue that degree and you go to college you gain a lot of different type of experiences by just going to college. And you make a lot of friends. You get to build relationships with professors. You get to join student organizations and participate in campus activities, which in the end becomes really important whenever you're applying for other types of scholarships and graduate school when you're looking into the future. Um, we do have some paperwork in the back. It's just some tips on writing essays and um, resumes, cover letters, and even whenever you're applying for college or scholarships, some of them do require you to write essays. So we did go ahead and print off some information in the back. We also have some um, test prep. We printed off a page from okcollegestart.org, and that's what um, Letha and Teresa talked to you about earlier. So we did print off some paperwork back there as well, so feel free. It's at um, Christian's booth, which is the red tablecloth, and you will see him back there, and he has got a ton of information from okcollegestart.org. We've got some information from recruiters who couldn't make it, and um, a ton of other scholarship information. So um, Sydney Prince is here with CU NASA. She is with the Native American Student Association for Cameron, and they are 
going to be an official organization, I believe. Is it this coming week? This next week? Yeah, so um, she's actually here. I had, I had attempted to start the Native American Student Association group at Cameron, and she made it happen. And it really made me excited because it gets to um, build a lot of friendships, but most importantly, you get to understand and see that there are other people, there are other natives here in college, all right, because you are capable. You are. And I want you to see here for yourself that we do have students who are making it and doing great things. Would you talk just a little bit about CU NASA? Hi, my name is Sydney Prince. Um, I would just like to tell you just a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a senior currently at Cameron University. Um, I'm majoring in psychology, but I was raised in Indarka, Oklahoma. And I think as Native Americans, a lot of times we're always participating in our cultures. And whenever we sometimes go to universities, our culture is not always there. So I think as an individual, I'm trying to make sure we're not invisible on campus. So that's what I'm trying to do. So a little bit about the Native American Student Association is that we're bringing um, Native American culture within the community and on campus. It's not ex exclusively for the um, Native American students, it's for everybody that wants to learn. So that's what we're all about. Um, so I will tell you a little bit about the activities we've done so far since we are brand new on campus for our first year. Um, we have done an Indigenous Day, so we're able to have different speakers of the, our artists in the Native American community and leaders. Um, we've helped with um, a Halloween carnival. We've been a part of a domestic abuse walk. Um, we're actually going to have a powwow um, January 12th, and um, we're actually going to do a Rock, um, Rock Your Mocks walk where we're going to have our tribal flags just kind of show people that we are here and kind of represent who we are. So um, a lot of um, individuals might think, why do I want to join an organization? That's a lot of work. What's the point of doing this? So um, when you're filling out scholarships, because I'm sure a lot of people are currently filling out scholarships and a ton of them, and you're probably tired of it. But um, a lot of times the scholarships are only lasting for one year. So you have to think long term, like I need money for all four years if you're going to get a bachelor's degree. So every year you're going to be applying for more scholarships. And they're going to ask you to create a resume a lot of times. And they want to know what leadership roles are, are you a part of or what organization, um, organizations are you a part of. So. Um, it's really important to get involved because they want to see that you're a well-rounded individual. And when you're part of organizations, you make connections with um, individuals. Um, I know currently at Cameron University, um, they have a plus scholarship for freshmen, but even if you didn't get your freshman year, you can always apply for it your junior year. So that's something you could work if you went to Cameron University now. You could join organizations, work on your GPA, and you can always apply later. So some of the scholarships you might not have gotten now, you can always work towards it. And that's like the importance of being a part of an organization. It helps you move forward and make connections. So yeah, my table's back there. If you have any kind of questions, does anybody have questions now? All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we talked about student organizations. Now, what about events on campus? So you can be involved in a lot of events on campus through student organizations, but it's a really good idea to attend some of these workshops that they put on because they're for your benefit. So I know that there are succeed workshops or informational workshops, and a lot of times they go over things like um, budgeting while you're in college. That's super important, super important. And they'll go over things like how to fill out scholarships. Or maybe they'll even go over some other things like even sexual harassment or, you know, suicide prevention or other things like that. So sometimes the campus will actually provide some kind of incentive for showing up. Sometimes they have food. It's always good whenever they've got free food, trust me. You know, you're there and they tell you, hey, we've got pizza, and you're like, oh, man, I'm starving, thank you. <laughs> so it's always good to um, just be involved on campus. You know, 
look for these groups that you can join or you know try and make some friends if you've got somebody in class share your phone number with them get to know them if you guys want to study that'll help you out you know have somebody that you can have questions with and conversate with about a course it's good information so student resources on campus that's one thing that i really wanted to touch on because there were some resources that I didn't know about until my junior year. A little too late. So there are things like tutoring programs on campus. If you're having issues in math, kind of like I did, I went to tutoring. It helped me out a lot. Helped me out a lot. The writing centers help you with writing your essays. They will look over things like your resumes in your cover letters when you're applying for jobs. They will help you do that. And also, some of these, you're already paying fees for anyways. Like the library. There's rental textbooks that you can actually use. If you can't afford to get your textbooks the first two weeks, go rent a textbook from the library. Also, printing services. You're paying for it. Use it. Get online, if you need, if you need help with um, anything in there like how to collate or you know, other things like that, they'll help you do that. Um, work study, that's another really important one. I did work study whenever I was in school. It helped me get a paycheck every two weeks. And um, there's also federal work study or state work study, either or. Um, they're really good to be involved. I was in the student development office, so I did career services and student development activities like disability awareness and things like that when I was in school. And I have to admit, I gained a lot of really good experience from those, those two positions that I held while I was working at Cameron. And it, that experience has actually brought me to where I am now with a higher ed department. Uh, the wellness center, free flu shots, um, midterm exams come around. They'll even do massages. If you set up a date and schedule an appointment, you're paying for that. Make sure you use it. One time I uh, ended up cutting my hand and I went there, they gave me a tetanus shot, they fixed me up and I was good to go. It was for free on campus while I was there. You pay for it. Use it. And lastly, I just wanted to go over building professional relationships. So with your professors, it's really important to make that connection with them and to start building a relationship. Because as you go through your collegiate career, there will be a time whenever you're starting to think about applying for internships or summer programs. And that is really important because you can gain letters of recommendation from these professors. And it's mostly important because once you build that relationship, these professors may come to you about doing research labs. I had a professor come up to me about doing a research lab with the I Am Indian group. That was one of the best experiences that I ever had. I truly enjoyed being able to do that. Because at first I was like, research? Mm, I think I'd rather do counseling or something like that. But whenever I got into it, to be able to research something, analyze it, and to do all the data and things that it doesn't sound super exciting, it was really fun, really fun. And I got great experience from it, and I was able to put it on my resume one extra thing that I can put in for a letter of recommendation for an internship. And I think that that pretty much covers the college experience. You know, if you ever have any questions or if you run into any concerns, you can always give higher ed a call or even student services. Um, we're here to help you. We are, um, we, we are a support system for you. And we never want you to feel like that you are alone or that you're in a hole and you don't know how to get out of it. You know, you have your friends and your family and you have us. You know, we, we will support you and we will help you in any way that we can. 
And um, lastly, Acellus, we are starting a new tutoring program. It is for Comanche students only, but um, the Acellus program is essentially an online accredited course or courses. And if you're struggling in anything like math or science, anything like that, we also have test prep, ACT, GED, um, whenever you're getting into school and you have to do like graduate exams, we also have test preps for those. The SAT, you know, if some of you should probably have already taken your ACT by now, um, you may be taking it again next year as a senior. You know, that's really important to start studying on that. Take it two or three times. I took mine one time. Wish I would have taken it twice because I was prepared for it afterwards. So, um, you know, those, those test preps are there for you. All you have to do is just give us a holler. Um, Jackie Holder, her name is Jackie Holder. She is the specialist and she's the one that helps um, students register for a CELUS. And she also does grade checks and things like that. But um, if you have any other questions about our services, we do um, voca vocational training services as well. And um, short term for those who are doing um, CPR or first aid things like that. But um, I think that that is about it there. Go ahead and hand this over to Christian. Okay, uh, before we, uh, I think we're gonna maybe raffle off some items. We're waiting on the uh, food to arrive, but before we do anything else, I want to let the representatives from Cameron University come up here and speak about their institution. <clears throat> And this is unplanned, I just asked them, so I told them, don't be nervous, the whole world is watching, so don't mess up. Thank you. Hi guys, my name is Abigail Mazo, and I am an admissions counselor at Cameron University. I am also a Cameron University graduate, so is Cheyenne. I graduated in 2017 with a degree in English literature. How many of you guys wanna study English when you get to college? Yeah, one, okay, two, maybe, yeah, awesome. Okay, so um, our English program is a really strong program. It's what I'm most familiar with. Um, but what I can tell you about Cameron in general, we are the second most affordable university in the state of Oklahoma, which means a lot of our students are able to graduate with minimal debt or debt free. I graduated with no debt through scholarship and financial aid, um, and Cheyenne did the same. So we were able to graduate and not owe anybody any money, which means we got to take a little bit of time to decide what we want to do before we jumped into the workforce. Um, I tried out a lot of different jobs before I ended up as a recruiter for Cameron, and that was I was able to do that because I didn't pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for a degree. Um, another great thing about Cameron, we're a smaller campus. Does, do any of you know how small we are? No? No? No one? Okay. We have about 4,300 students on our campus at a time. Um, so that means your class sizes are going to be fairly small. You're going to have one professor to 20 students in your gen eds. And then when you get into your major courses, that number shrinks. You can have anywhere from 1 to 10, 1 to 3, 1 to 17. Um, it really kind of depends on the courses you're taking, but those class sizes are going to be small, which means you're going to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one information from your professor, a lot of one-on-one -on -one time, and then say you don't learn the same way as your neighbor because everybody has a different style of learning. Your professors are going to get to know that about you and they can help you specifically succeed in their courses, which is great. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my experience. Um, I think it's been mentioned, but there is a plus scholarship at Cameron University. I was a plus scholar. Um, so that meant it's the Presidential Leadership's University Scholars. Um, and so with that, I had my tuition waived. I had a room waiver. And then I also had a stipend at the first year and the last year of my study. So I was getting paid to go to Cameron. I was getting a check in the mail from Cameron every semester. Um, with the leftover money, which I used to buy my books a lot of the times. So the PLUS scholarship is really awesome. If you're involved in SGA at school, your student government, um, if you do volunteer work, if you do a lot of leadership programs or anything like that, um, working in your youth group, working with kids after school, all of those things are gonna make you a candidate for PLUS. 
um, which is, again, a great scholarship to look for. If you don't qualify for PLUS, there is $250 million worth of scholarships from Cameron every year. So make sure you're applying to those. Um, and I'm going to let Cheyenne tell you a little bit about her experience at Cameron. She was a communications and media and journalism major. Um, and so we have a really cool program going for our media and journalism students that I'm going to let Cheyenne tell you about. So like Abby said, my name is Cheyenne Cole. I just graduated from Cameron in uh, May in 2018 with a bachelor's in journalism and media production. Is there anyone here who's interested in journalism and media production? Yeah, you are. You were the English major too. You too? Okay, so we have a wonderful journalism program and it is a convergence program. So what that means is that if you're gonna learn the writing side, you're also gonna learn the broadcast side. So for me personally, um, I started off at the newspaper as an A&E editor, and I do love writing. I started off um, writing movie reviews, and that's how I started to work for the newspaper. And then I became the managing editor of the newspaper, and what I found out then is that everybody loves to write movie reviews. Everybody loves to write the book reviews. So it was my job to um, do the real campus news and the city news and stuff like that. So that was in my first semester of my senior year. I was figuring that out. And then I had a broadcast professor who was like, wow, I think that you really have a knack for this kind of writing too. I really want you to intern out at KSWO. So I interned out there and um, it just was not for me. It might have been, but something else happened in my life when I was a junior and I started to work on campus because one of my fellow students recommended me when she was leaving the alumni office. Um, so I ended up working in alumni relations for, well, until I graduated and I loved it there. Um, any chance that I had to work those campus events like our alumni toast or our alumni awards, I always jumped at that. Um, and so that's when I realized that I wanted to work on campus after graduation and not in the journalism field. Although I love writing, I still do. It just was not what I was passionate about. I was passionate about helping students. And the other thing I'll say is I'm from Lawton. Um, I graduated from Eisenhower in 2014. So when I was graduating from high school, I really, really wanted to leave Lawton. Like if you're from Lawton or any of the surrounding areas, the goal is to get as far away as possible, right? I, I know that some, yeah, I see you guys in the back are feeling me. Um, okay, but staying in Lawton, I felt like I got stuck, but it was literally the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Where you are in your life is where you are meant to be. There's no place that you can be that you're not meant to be. So that's all that I have to say about that. Abby and I will be back there. Um, you can feel free to come back and get some information about Cameron and ask us any questions that you would like. Thank you, Cameron. And now I'd like to invite our last speaker for the night from Student Services, this is Lee. Hi, how are y'all doing? I'm with the K through 12 student services. We have student services that's higher ed and then we have student services that's K through 12. You probably know us as the one that helps you with assistance with clothing. We give you the gift cards at the first of the year so you can have supplemental clothing and get your stuff for that. What we also do is we help with senior assistance. And senior assistance is for cap, gown, and announcement or senior portraits. We help with $200 towards that. And all we need is if you have already filled out an application, all we'll need you to do is uh, turn in an invoice. Let's say your school get, uses Jostens or your school uses Prestige or something like that. All we'll need you to do is fill in the, get the invoice from the recruiter when they come in there and uh, get it to us either by fax or by email. We generate it, we process it up to $200 and we send it off to the provider just for you guys. Um, we also will do private vendors to photographers so if you have a favorite photographer that you use, we have some examples back there on our desk. We'll also do with private vendors. We just need a W-9 from that photographer and we'll do up to $200 also. If you started looking at that, you'll see that your photography is gonna be one of your most ex expensive items on your senior list. If you're going with Jostens, 
you need to do it quickly because if you don't do it quickly, they stop taking checks after about the middle of December and that's all we work with. And all they'll take after that time is a credit card. So keep that in mind if you're with Justin's. I know time goes really fast in high, when you're in the 12th grade, but just start thinking about it. You need to get it out and get it as quick as possible. Um, we have all our information back at the back. If you need any information about that, we also have Oklahoma Promise stuff back there. When Brittany was talking about a cellist for tutoring, we also do a cellist for tutoring through our program. So if you need that, if you want to talk to us about it, you can. How many of y'all know Will Smith? Got a little joke for you. Do you know how you find Will Smith in the snow? You look for his fresh prints. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you, all the speakers. Uh, for the live stream audience, if you do have questions, please, uh, IT is going to put all the information on the live stream. So please, if you have any questions, please email or call us. And so if you notice back there, guys, the food is here. The pizza is here. So if you ever come to our events, you know we always feed. If you can, how many came to our September college career fair? How many came to the September when we had a big day that day? So we had about 300 students that day. So every year we do a college day in September. It usually falls right after uh, September 11th. So come to that. Next year it'll be the same day, same time, place here. And we'll have about three more, 300 students there and a lot more vendors. So with that said, um, I think we're going to go ahead and, and let y'all um, visit the booths and eat, okay? So uh, give me one second. Let me ask, let me ask uh, one of my friends to come help me out. Carla, can you come over a second?